Hi everyone, my name is Paul Ambrosiusen and I'm a game shelf tool developer at SideFX Software. So today I will talk about a tool called Pivot Painter. Pivot Painter is a Houdini digital asset tool that stores model pivot and rotation information in the model's vertex data and additional UV channels. That information data can then be referenced inside of Unreal Engine shader system to create interactive effects. So what you see right now on my screen is a, an example that I put together, which I call 360 star, which is basically a sphere with a lot of boxes copied on top of the surface, pointing outwards. Um, but this object is a static mesh, which means that it cannot hold any, informa any animation information data. Which that means in this case that all animation you see happens in the shader. However, uh, in order to achieve this effect, every single sub-object, every single small box here, needs to know in which direction it needs to move. It needs to have a fictional pivot. So that information is stored into every single vertex of this mesh. So let's go into Houdini and check out how we achieve this result. So this is the example that we saw in Unreal just a few seconds ago. We have a model and we have pivot points. So these are the pivot points to which the boxes are attached. So let's take a look at this simplified version of this object. In this case, let's just take one point um, and we give that point a name attribute. In this case, we call it piece one because there's only one piece. And we also give it a normal attribute. So in this case, the normal attribute is pointing upwards. We also have a box object, which we will copy on top of the point that we saw, and it will be copied along the normal orientation of the point that we copied to. That gives us, in this case, geometry, um, and it also gives us a pivot point to which we want to store the geometry. So let's bring that object into Unreal Engine. So what we do is we put down the Pivot Painter Houdini Digital Asset, we plug in the geometry on the left side, and we plug in the pivot point to the right side. Then what we do with the tool is we select the per object basis, and we put down an output node to make sure that when we export it as FBX, it will export this chain. We hit export, and let's call this, in this case, static mesh simple box. We hit export and we go into Unreal Engine. So what we do now is we hit import asset, we select our simple box FBX we just exported and we need to take a look at these import settings. These import settings are very important uh, to get correct because otherwise we can get very very strange results. It does not need to be a ske skeletal mesh because it's a, a static mesh. We do not want collision in this case uh, it is important to turn off light map UVs, but if you really want to, uh, you actually can generate light map UVs. But for that, uh, I will I will talk more about it later in the video. Uh, we do not need to combine meshes in this case because it's one object. And important to note is that we do not want to convert the scene. If we have an object in Houdini, uh, it uses the Y up coordinate system, but Unreal Engine uses the Z up coordinate system. However, we pack our world space uh, pivot information into the vertex data. So if we convert the scene in this case, the model will be oriented correctly, but the corresponding pivot information will still use the Houdini system. So we need to leave this off for now. We do not need to import materials and we do not need to import textures in this case. So we simply hit import. So let's see if it worked. We drop down our object and we will see that it will be facing in negative y direction in this case. Uh, that's no problem. Uh, the only thing we need to do is simply rotate it 90 degrees for it to face upwards again and we have an exact same copy of the model in Unreal. So let's put our material on here and as you can see we have an object that rotates along the oriented normal that we had on our pivot point. All right, that's nice. 
However, if you want to do something more complex, like for example grass that bends away when you walk on top of it, that is also something we can do with Pivot Painter. So let's take a look at how we did that. Let's, let's take a grid uh, with a lot of points and let's give every single point of that grid a name attribute. We simply give it the point number as the name attribute, to be simple. We also give every single point a normal attribute, which once again simply points upwards. We then copy stamp our boxes onto this grid again along the normal attribute, the orientation attribute, and we multiply it by 100 again, or in this case 60. We do the same for the pivot points, and then all we need to do is drop down a pivot painter node. We plug the geometry in on the left side, the pivot points on the right side. We turn on this, and as you can see, it changed the vertex colors in this case, which means that it actually worked. That is good news so far. So let's plug it into the output again. Hit export for the FBX and we will call it grass. We hit export again, go back into Unreal Engine and we import our asset. Let's select our grass mesh. Unreal Engine remembered the settings from the previous import so we can simply hit import again. And we need to rotate our object 90 degrees again. All we need to do right now is put on the grass material and it does not move yet. So what we need to do in order to get this to work is simply go into play mode and we will see that these boxes that we scattered on a grid will move away from the player when we walk through them. All right, that was easy. So with this setup, you can very easily get some cool VFX going. You can get some very basic uh, animation going. You can get some more complex animation going. So grass bending away. So you could use this for grass, for small bushes, uh, VFX, like I said. Uh, but most of the people want to use Pivot Painter for something more complex, like a tree system, for example. So a tree that is animated without having it be a skeletal mesh. So we can do that as well. That is called Hierarchical Pivot Painter. So let's take a look at how we can do that. All right. So in this case, we have this very beautiful tree that I made um, and we want to have it animated in Unreal Engine. So what we could do is we could rig it, we could make an animation in Houdini, or we could also just use Pivot Painter. So we once again have our mesh here and we have our pivot points here. So one for the trunk, one for the leaves. And like I said before, they have attributes. So the geometry has a shared name attribute, so just like the pivot, and it has UVs. And our pivot points have a name attribute as well. And it also has a normal attribute, which will be the orientation of the leaves we want it to be. So in this case, it is a generated tree. So I started off with a simple line, uh, sweep some geometry along the line, gave you some subdivisions and then what it is I scattered some points on the on the trunk of the tree and then I copied uh, these grids onto the tree trunk and then we have the leaves then I gave the leaves a primitive group called leaf group and I gave the branch in this case just a trunk the branch group it is important to note that if you want to use hierarchical uh, pivot painter tool you need to have two groups, a group for the branches and a group for the leaves. So we make it bigger again for it to match the Unreal Engine uh, scene unit. We have our trees and we have our pivot points which correspond to the geometry. So let's bring this into Unreal. We have our pivot painter, once again put in geometry on the left, pivot points to the right but in this time we will put it on hierarchical setup. So we will see that Houdini will show us three new settings we can use. So let's visualize this first. All right. The tool doesn't show us anything. Why doesn't it? Well, the tool expects you to put in the name of the branch group and the name of the leaves group. So let's do that. We called our groups leaf group and branch group. 
So we will simply put in branch group and we will put in here leaf group. There we go. What we will see now is that um, the pivot painter tool once again colored our uh, vertex colors, but it also made the tool semi transparent. Well, no worries, that is the alpha channel, which the tool will also use within Unreal to animate the tree. All right, so that's literally everything we need to do for this tree to get it into the engine. We plug it into the output node again, and we once again hit export. Let's call this tree one. We hit export, we go back into engine, we once again import our mesh, which for it to finish, we drag it into our scene, rotate it 90 degrees again, and what the tool has also done for us is that it has already made two material slots, one for the leaves and one for the branches. So let's take our leaf group, apply it on there, and what we will see is that the leaves are already animating. The branch is not yet, so we will put our branch material to the branch, and what we will see is that the tool now has um, given us a tree that has a very beautiful animation where the leaves inherit the movement of its parent uh, animation. So the leaves will actually stick to the mesh and animate accordingly. So that's very beautiful, but this was a generated tree. So we had the pivot points for every single leaf, which is sort of cheating. So I decided to also make a more complex setup, or at least complex on the inside of the tool, but easy to use for the users. So let's take a tree that is somewhat more beautiful and import that into Houdini. So what we have here is a tree from Unreal, which we will run through the Pivot Painter tool. But in this case, this is just a static mesh. We don't have any pivots. So what we can do is we can once again put the tool to hierarchical setup, and this time we will leave the input data to generate pivots. So this time we only need to plug in our geometry on the left side, and we will once again call the groups um, from this FBX, which we called branch group, and this one we called leaf group. Let's see what the tool made out of it. There we go, it does some calculations, and there we go. It automatically generated and calculated the pivot positions for every single branch and every single leaf attached to those branches and has also packed all our data into the corresponding vertex colors and UV attributes. So we can hit export on this object. This time we will call it tree2. We hit export again. Go back into Unreal. And we take our tree, import it. Hit OK. So as you can see, this tree is, is not as beautiful as my, my other tree but it's very beautiful as well. So let's just apply the leaves to this one and let's apply the branches to that one and let's see how it looks. This is the exact same model as used in the content examples uh, by Unreal Engine, but in this case, we didn't have to do any of the manual uh, pre-processing, which is splitting up every single uh, sub-object of the big object, placing the pivot point manually, um, having to run the script, seeing if it works and testing it again. Now in this case with the Houdini digital asset, it will procedurally figure out all that data for you and you simply need to hit export. And there we go, we have our hierarchy tree being animated. So this allows us to have a lot more trees being animated by simple wind um, without having to give it an animation or rig it, so it's a lot more performant. So that's very nice if we have foliage, we have VFX, we have some grass, we can do some basic logic, we do, can do some more complex logic, but we can also think out of the box. So I also made a small bonus example, which, you know, I'm hoping you guys will take a look at and come up with some more cool examples. So I decided, why don't we just take our cool 
pig head and give this guy some hair. So what I did is I simply scattered some points onto it, uh, onto an area that I painted. So I masked out where I want those scattered points to be. I gave uh, some of them a P scale for it to get some, some difference in scale. I gave every single uh, point a name attribute and that gave me some pivot points with a normal attribute on them. So in this case, we can see that these are the normal sort of orientation that I want the hair to be, which is used by the copy stamp node and gives us our hair. So what we have now is our hair geometry, we have our pivot points, and we have our head. So if you want to just do the pivot painter data on the hair, we just run the hair geometry in the pivot painter tool, same for the pivots, which gives us, oh, we need to turn this off and put it back to per object basis because these hair strands do not have a parent in this case. So as you can see, it already did the pivot painter packing of data. Now we simply need to merge it with our pig head geometry and we should have something that looks a bit like this. We now simply put the output node in again. We hit FBX export and let's call this pig head. All right, there we go. Let's go back into Unreal, import our model again. Pig head, there it is. Hit import. Bring our model into the scene. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. And let's just apply our pig head material to the hair material slot. So as you can see now, we have our animated hair, which we did not rig, we did not animate. We simply use a shader that simulates wind in this case. So if we wanted, we could just combine some of the logic from the grass and the hair on the pig. So that if we have a very hairy character, we could make it so that the hair is affected by the wind. It inherits the movement from the object when walking through a scene. But we could also give it some logic so that if a player walks into that hairy object, the hair will bend away, just like with the grass. So as you can see, there are a lot of possibilities with the Pivot Painter tool. Um, and I hope you guys will uh, find some more uses for it, test it out, give me some feedback, send some bug reports because there will most likely be bugs in the tool still. Uh, and that's all for the tool. However, uh, some people expressed that they would like to use uh, different channels or different kinds of places to pack the data because they might already use the vertex colors for for example uh, material blending. So that is why I also built in a custom data packing method. So in this case we can see that Unreal Now uh, made these editable for us when we put this to custom and we can specify that we do not want the forward axis to be in the vertex colors in this case cd.r, cd.g, cd.b but we could use just put this into, for example, uv4.x, uv4.y, and uv5.x. I put this in uv5.x because uv channels can only have x and y into it because it's a 2D uh, vector. So we do that, but if you do this, it is important to note that if you pack your data differently here, which is completely fine, you also need to make sure that the pivot painter expression function, which Unreal Engine gives you in the content examples, that you need to modify how it reads out the data. So in this case, the pivot position, which we can see here, gets stored into UV2 and UV3, gets read out of UV2 and UV3 in Unreal as well. So if we change those in Houdini, we also need to change these. So that is something you need to be aware of. The materials that I've used here in this scene um, are simple modifications from the ones used in the content examples. So you can find those for free uh, in the Unreal Engine. Please test the tool, uh, show us some results like I said before. Uh, feedback is uh, very much appreciated. 
and please send us any bug reports or feature requests you might have and I will take a look at that. Thank you.